Hello and welcome to the second SABA Reflection of 2021. Now traditionally, of course, at this time of the year, we would be bombarded on our TV screens about the need to join a gym with some expensive membership, uh, or we would have some newfangled diet uh, coming our way that we'd be encouraged uh, to join. Uh, we've gone from feast to famine, uh, from excess uh, to exercise. Uh, it's, a, it's a new world, traditionally, this time of year. And of course, as we've come into 2021, we appreciate it is very much a new world, uh, a difficult world. Um, but that area of going from excess to exercise uh, resonates certainly uh, with me. Uh, Sue recently got a message on Facebook from one of her friends uh, that says, I'm not saying I've put on weight, but even my socks are tight. <laughs> that made me uh, smile. Um, so the question I'm asking uh, today uh, to you and to me is, what kind of condition are we in? Uh, some years ago now, uh, I was part of a gym uh, back in Cardiff, and I thought I'd trained enough to go <laughs> and have a fitness assessment. And so I went um, in trepidation to, uh, to this young lady who looked as if she'd just stepped out of nursery school um, and uh, she pushed and prodded me for about 15 minutes. And I'll never forget her words. Uh, she said, Mr. Llewellyn, you are obese. But she said, and this was the real encouragement, if you work so hard for the next six weeks, I think you'll only be grossly overweight. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Uh, but today I'm, I'm not thinking about um, uh, fitness or um, our, our physical weight, as important as those things are. Um, I want to talk about what's going on in here, um, inside of us, because I recognise that actually knowing how we're doing inside here is a lot more complex than going for some sort of physical assessment at a gym or elsewhere. Uh, some years ago, I uh, came across uh, these uh, words from Robert Murray McShane. He says, my people's greatest need is my personal holiness. He goes on to write, above all things, cultivate your own spirit. He later wrote to a pastor saying, your own soul is your first and greatest care. So how is your soul doing? How is my soul doing? Let me um, give you um, a couple of examples about how complex uh, it can be to just ascertain how we're, we're doing. Uh, both relate to cars, actually. So the first one, um, do you remember when we used to use cars, by the way? <laughs> Um, I noticed that the back tyre um, was a little bit flat, so I took it to the garage and they had a look at it and they found a tiny, tiny little screw uh, in the tyre uh, and very helpfully the uh, the tyre fitter said, oh, he said that's not a problem, he said uh, it'd be quite inexpensive um, and uh, proceeded to get on with the work. Well, anyway, a short time later, uh, he asked me to come out and have a look at the tyre and what we found inside was just black soot, lots of it. And he, uh, he just looked at me and said, you've been driving with a flat tire for a while, haven't you? And I said, I don't know, I don't think so. Uh, and what I learned that day is my, um, my lack of attention cost me a lot more than it should have done. So a simple repair, actually required a whole new uh, tyre. Uh, I have um, a great friend uh, in another association uh, who's a soul winner, uh, a great person, uh, somebody who's won many people to Christ. And what he discovered was that for some little while he'd been running with not enough air in his tyres. And when he eventually went to the doctor, uh, he found that the cost to him was significantly more than he'd have ever appreciated. Uh, it took him out of ministry uh, for, for some months. 
The second example, again right into a car, I was again in Cardiff and uh, coming back from a, uh, an assembly I was doing at the local high school. And I noticed as I was getting back into the car, um, a little mark on the bumper uh, that wasn't there previously. Uh, the reason why I noticed it was because the bumper was now sticking out a little bit and it, was, it, was, it looked quite dangerous actually. So I took it to the, uh, the garage and uh, here's the picture by the way of uh, that little mark. Um, and again the garage said oh that shouldn't be um, that difficult to repair, shouldn't be that costly. Anyway, later in that day they sent me a picture of what they found when they took the bumper off to repair. I was astonished about what I saw. And what transpired, apparently the school had some video footage of a large 4x4 reversing quite quickly into my car, uh, which had done the significant damage that you've seen in that photo. Uh, here's the point. We get stuff bumping into us all of the time. Sometime we're aware of the damage it's causing, but sometime we're not. So here's a couple of questions. Who do you allow to look behind the bumper? When's the last time you looked at the condition of your tyres? The last year has been difficult. Um, that's an understatement. Uh, it's been so challenging in so many different ways. And as we start this new year, I'm just very conscious that not all of us, we're going to use the analogy of a car, not all of us are starting with a full tank. <laughs> we may well be on red. Uh, if you've got a car like mine, it's probably beeping at you that you need to stop at a fuel station. Joth recently uh, gave me a book uh, which I've actually found uh, really helpful. It's called Sustaining Leadership by Paul Swan, and I commend it to each of you. You get a flavour of the book on the front cover. You are more important than your ministry. In the book, he quotes an American author uh, called Parker Palmer, and he says, self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on earth to offer to others. Paul Swan, like many of us, learnt the hard way about the importance of self-care, or what I call soul care. This is from the short biography uh, at the back of the book. It says, Paul Swan trained for ordination in the Anglican Church and served in two growing parishes in the Diocese of Worcester. In 2008, he retired early and spent four years in the wilderness of total fatigue. Since 2012, Paul has begun to offer a new ministry from this place of weakness. He has served as a diocesan advisor on spirituality, offers spiritual direction and leads retreats. He also serves part-time on the staff of All Saints Worcester. We've just recently wrapped up our Christmas decorations for another year uh, and as I was doing that uh, I broke uh, one of our glass ornaments. I guess I didn't appreciate just how fragile it was uh, and if I'm honest I, I sometimes forget just how fragile I am, just how fragile we are. Again quoting uh, from this excellent book uh, and then from Brennan Manning, um, uh, one of my favourite authors, uh, he says, One of the stunning lessons of the Bible is God's free use of fragile human beings to accomplish his purpose. He does not always choose the devout or even the emotionally well-balanced. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the bearer of gifts, and these gifts are sometimes lavished in peculiar places. Like my car, we sometimes need others to help us understand how we're doing. Sometimes we can use excellent books like the one I've referred to. Um, but we also need others. 
a, a good friend, a, a family member, um, a regional minister who cares uh, for you. Or even using the excellent counselling service that the BU makes available to so many of us. The point I'm making, and I make it to myself as much as I to you, uh, we need to take stock. We need to really look behind the bumper, check those tyres, ensure that um, we know what kind of condition we are as we seek to serve the Lord again uh, in an uncertain 2021. But as I uh, finish uh, this reflection, I want us to go now to some verses from Scripture, verses I go to uh, on many occasions. Uh, they're helping me to go to the source for my soul care. Yes, of course, we need others. But primarily, I need to go again to gaze into the beautiful face of our Saviour. So these are the words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may, go, um, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Well, as we set off into this new year, my prayer is that um, you will be so blessed by God and that uh, you and I uh, will take time uh, to truly reflect on uh, the condition uh, that we are in. So God bless you.